Infinite Warfare Zombies is never something I have ever imagined myself playing. When this game released, I was 15 and was disappointed with the narrative of this game and therefore did not buy it. Growing up, I always enjoyed zombies, but never invested any real time or effort into completing these raids. Until the disappointing Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 released over the last couple of years. These games have felt dry and have lacked a fresh feel as all of the older Call of Duties had. In looking for a new experience, but still being a Call of Duty fan, I turned to Zombies. Zombies provided me with an adequate balance of challenge and progression that I had been craving. I consider myself to be relatively good at multiplayer, but I can say that multiplayer skills do not translate to Zombies. It is truly like learning a new game for a first time. Sure, both multiplayer and Zombies share movement and shooting mechanics, but Zombies brings an entirely new feeling of being fully in control while also being completely overwhelmed. Now after completing Black Ops 3 with my friends, I decided to take on the challenge of Infinite Warfare. Like most people, my friends were not too keen on spending nearly $60 for a 6 year old game just to play zombies. So it was now my task to complete Infinite Warfare solo. I had never played zombies solo, but I figured I was fully capable of this and it was going to be a breeze. I mean, I already beat Black Ops 3, the best zombies mode there is. How hard could it be? Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. Before we get started, I figured it would be a good idea to at least cover the gist of the story in this game. Basically, four actors arrive at a theater to take part in a Willard Wyler production, one of the most famous directors who claims to have the most infamous death scenes in the film. What our actors don't know is Willard Wyler is the villain and traps people in real horror scenarios in order to get real death scenes. In this case, Willard puts our four actors in the scenario Zombies in Spaceland, a space-themed amusement park crawling with zombies. So here I spawn and I get the nerd character. Now one thing that I really like about this game is for each map every character kind of has uh, like a different melee weapon and different things like that. So right off the bat I grab the M1 Grant, I grab Up and Atoms, and then I pop a Scope Dollars. This was very early on when I was playing this game and I wasn't too familiar with all the Fate and Fortune cards. I then grab Neil's head and a calculator and I turn on my second power switch. I then grab Tough Enough here, and I head over and take my first portal. I then head over to the arcade, turn on the power, and then I try and get some tickets going, because I know I'm going to be needing tickets later on, and the first game I play is basketball, and I suck at the basketball. As you can see there, here I activate my second portal. And then I pop a perk insured, because why not? Grab the umbrella. I then head over to Polar Peak, turn on the power, and jump on the roller coaster. I absolutely love this roller coaster. I thought this roller coaster was so much fun. I don't know why, I don't know what it was. It gave you lots of tickets, and I just, I had a blast doing this thing. So I, I, I did it lots, and you'll probably see it more, more times in the video. Here you can see I got a score of 34, which gave me 170 tickets, so I was pretty happy with that. Next, we come over to the Kepler system. I grab the boombox, I turn on the power, and then here I take my last two portals, Kepler and Polar Peaks. And then that is Pack-a-Punch all set up. Here, we're just going back to the arcade. We're just trying to get more tickets still. We have to accumulate quite a bit. And then we head over here. I need to buy the Arcane Core. I accidentally buy the Armageddon, but that's okay. We can still move on. I head into Pack-a-Punch. Hit these ships. I now have to get trap kills around one of these ships in order to get another piece that I can add to the Arcane Core that makes the M1 Grand super good. Like absolutely unreal. Here I run back to the arcade, I grab the MV4 just because the M1 wasn't holding up too much and then I come talk to David Hasselhoff and I build the SATICOM. I then grab Bang Bangs and I make my way over here. I need to put three green tokens into this machine so that's my first one. And then since I got my trap kills I now have to fill the ship up with kills with the arcane core in order to get the part for my M1. I now come over here and grab cryo freeze grenades and then I hit the roller coaster again. Look at me just going. 
I then grab Crickies and I head back over to the arcade and pick up the golden teeth, which I'll need for later. And then I pack a punch my M1 Grand. Here, I need to get a brute to go into the crocodile's mouth, and then I need the crocodile to close on the brute so it breaks the crocodile's teeth, and then I can put the golden teeth in there. This is a bit of a weird step. You get to see the M1 Grand in action, and it absolutely destroys. It knocks that guy out so quick. Here, I have to throw a cryo freeze grenade at this abominable snowman, and then I have to get headshots as he freezes the zombies coming at me. And this is in order to unlock a part for the head cutter. Second part, I get by putting three green tokens into the souvenir machine. And then the third part, I get from putting the golden teeth into the crocodile's mouth and then grabbing the crystal. So there's four wonder weapons. I built the head cutter in this video. And um, it's I, the only reason I built it is because the M1 Grand with the arcane core for this weapon is so good and so amazing for the SATICOM step here. So I basically just have to defend this SATICOM for 60 seconds and then I have to do this three times and the duration increases each time. So you start at 60, then you go to 90, and then you go to, I think it's 120 seconds. The SATICOM step, I when I first was doing this Easter egg, I had a lot of difficulty with this step, but then using this M1 Grand with the Arcane Core makes it just so easy. You just fly right through this step um, no matter the I guess if you do it before round 20 yeah you're you're moving here I'm on my last SATICOM step and there it is all finished up and then we head back to David and we're gonna give him the SATICOM all complete and then in a few rounds we're gonna be able to come back to him and collect our speaker so with this speaker we basically just place it around here and this allows us to start the boss fight. The first step of the boss fight is we basically just do a Simon Says, the spaceship will flash a color and then I have to remember which color is which speaker and then I walk around and just play them back in order. And I have to do this three times and then once I do that three times it'll turn into a clown round basically and a bunch of clowns will start flying out from the green sides there and I just have to survive for a couple minutes and then we are able to engage the boss fight. So here you can see I completed the Simon instead and then all the clowns all the zombies start coming at me and you basically just have to survive and then finally the alien spawns in. So you have to shoot the alien with the wonder weapons and here I almost go down I get red screened don't know how I didn't go down but we're happy we didn't so all good there here I'm just running around and I think I get this is where I get my first down on him so now I have to run to his back and and smack his back to get the fuses off but zombies flood me and I don't shoot any of them and I immediately go down so I was pretty bummed there and I really was not feeling confident after that I didn't think this was gonna go well so I run back to the lost and found and I grab my guns and I grab quick revive again or self res I suppose. And then, yeah, we're ready to take on the alien again. Here, I get my second down on him, and I'm a little bit smarter, so I do shoot some zombies, but it's still not great. I still get red screened, and again, probably should have gone down there. But that's, uh, that's one of the fuses gone. And then here, we get him down for the second time, and then we get the second fuse. And then now, we just have to kill him. So this next one, just put as many shots into him as we can, and that's what we do there. The next step, uh, I have to grab the alien fuses, which you only get after killing the alien, and then put them in the pack-a-punch machine, and pack-a-punch my head cutter. With the pack-a-punch head cutter, I can now go back and I can shoot these lights around the ring. There's five of them, and once I shoot all five, a laser beam will come up from the teleporter, uh, the Pack-a-Punch teleporter, and it will destroy the spaceship that's flying around above us, the alien's spaceship. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all of my fails, but this probably took me four tries before I actually took down the spaceship. I was, uh, I was pretty happy to get it done there. Here I grab the soul key, and that's it. That's Zombies in Spaceland done. 
Spaceland was by far the best map in this game and I really did not know what to expect for the next map. Here our protagonists grab the soul key and Weiler's all mad so now he sends us to Rave in the Redwoods. Rave in the Redwoods takes place deep in the forest during a 90s rave where a zombie apocalypse breaks out and it is our character's job to find the next piece of the soul key. I love that with each map you're in a different time period and I thought that this map did a fantastic job of executing the 90s slasher theme. I also found it interesting how in this map you spawn with your fists and are then tasked to find a melee weapon around the spawn room as your starter weapon. I also really enjoy the 90s uh, aesthetic of the characters as well so now our characters change and they have new clothes and new personality they're just different it feels fresh I, I really enjoyed this map here I spawn in with AJ who I honestly don't mind as a character he's pretty cool and I run up and I grab the spiked bat and the M1 Garand uh, for this specific easter egg for Raven the Redwoods I was streaming so I had some people in the chat helping me out it definitely made earning points at the beginning of the game a lot easier when they taught me a little trick with the fate and fortunes card so you use the critical kill fortune card with the scope dollars and then you can line up zombies and you just get tons of points which helped me out a ton at the beginning of this map so at the beginning I'm basically just running around there I grab my first statue and then I turn on the power here I run up here and I grab my second boat part and then I grab tough enough I then run back to where power was I grab bang bangs and now I'm off to open up the rave area here I use get packed so I get the type 2 pack a punched and then I grab my third boat part and my second statue I got lucky and got a fire sale so I tried out some guns and this is one of the things in Infinite Warfare that really impressed me was I didn't realize there was alternate weapon types and or like you can split your guns and they have different shooting ability. Here I then drop down to the climbing wall and I grab my third statue and then down by the docks is my fourth. Since I have all the boat parts I come and I grab the first reel for the projector and then I jump in the boat. I then hustle over here, I grab a wiener, I grab the second reel, and then I talk to Kevin, Kevin Smith. I then place the parts on the projector, and then that restores Pack-a-Punch. Once you talk to Kevin, a photo spawns down by the rave area, so I pick it up, and then I now have to come place it over at the campsite. At the campsite, I'm now trying to shoot the arms off of all of these zombies, and... This one was not the easiest thing to do. I think the arms is probably the hardest one. And then once I'm done, I grab this little flare and a slasher spawns. And this is why I got the pack a punched type two because it takes this guy down quick, which is really handy. I then run back and I see this shining flare and I pick that up and then I can now come back to Kev and I talk to Kev and then now I can kind of repeat that process but with a different photo. First, I'm going to do the wiener step where I have to run around in rave mode and throw a wiener at three deer heads in order to collect the symbols which unlock the Vlad. The Vlad is the explosive bow wonder weapon in this map and it is super good. So here I hit my last deer head, I shoot it, I grab my last symbol and then now the Vlad can be unlocked when I decide I want to use it. And then pick up the second photo that I need, unlock the Vlad, and then I grab the Banshee, which is super good for the next photo part. So here I now need to shoot the zombies in the legs and collect leg leg orbs. I, I have no idea. I really don't understand this part, but that's okay. So we pick it up and then another slash responds. And these guys are pretty tanky. They are pretty tanky. So here I take them out and kind of nukes all the zombies and then I can go and grab the shiny orb. Here I swap out the Banshee for the Vlad because I no longer need 
to shoot legs and then I come talk to Kev for the last time and now I am able to grab a skull that is located in the basement. Once I grab the skull we have one more ritual thing to do where I now have to shoot the heads off of zombies. Once I finish that up I can grab the shiny orb and another slasher will spawn. These slashers proved to be the most difficult part of the easter egg for me. I died to these guys a few times just using the wrong guns and not really playing it right. What can you do? So here I come and I grab the last orb that I need to get and then I'm pretty much ready to go. Now I just need to get kills in front of these statues and it will allow me to begin upgrading the Vlad. So there I got kills by the speakers there filled up all those statues I grab the owl statue and then I place it in front of the owl totem pole and I now need to get kills using the Vlad in front of the pole which then gives me the acid rain Vlad this thing is so good and you'll see why I can now run down to the basement and press this button which initiates the boss fight I run down to the dock and I take the boat across the lake with Kevin Smith at this point we start to find out that Kevin Smith is actually the super slasher. He is the boss for this map where he, like us, has been trapped by Willard Wyler. Through the Easter egg, we start to become friends with him. We learn about his story, about how him and his friend have fallen apart, and this is them trying to reunite. And is unfortunately killed by the super slasher. So this boss fight has three steps. Um, the first step, is where you have to come here and get zombie kills which will lift these orbs super high in the air and then once both of them are high enough a blue circle will spawn once the blue circle spawns as you see here we try and get the super slasher to jump into the circle and once he's jumped into the circle he will have little talisman on him and it is my job to shoot the talisman so here is me shooting the last talisman and now he's gonna jump way up onto the roof and I just have to stand in a circle, a little green circle and survive. If I step outside of the circle, I will die. And I did die doing this one time. I didn't realize that if you're outside of the circle, you die and that was game over for me. So I learned from that. Um, this is the third and final step. So once you complete this step, you just repeat all three steps more times. Here I actually take a down, I was, again I'm not very clutch in these boss fights. So after completing all of those steps three times I can now shoot the last talisman and now the boss just becomes vulnerable to bullets. So I can just start shooting him and as you'll see here I start getting hit markers and he's super squishy so he takes on a lot of bullets but finally we get it done and there he goes down. This is a really cool animation. I really like this part. Overall, I thought this was a really cool map. I thought that it fit the 90s slasher theme really well. So here I grab the soul key and our characters are now teleported to the next map, which is Shaolin Shuffle. And this map had a lot of mixed reviews. So I, again, was I had no clue what to expect going into this. The story behind Shaolin Shuffle is that there's a billionaire, Arthur McIntosh, who steals a bunch of money and then he is arrested and goes to jail, but Arthur McIntosh escapes. We then see him after escaping down in the sewers drinking the vial number 13. We can only assume that this vial attracts rats and allows him to become a rat and here we see him become the Rat King. Shaolin takes on the 80s New York aesthetic where our characters are essentially playing as um, New York detectives and we are completing detective work in order to figure out where Arthur McIntosh has gone. This map had a lot of weird parts for the Easter egg so this map took me a lot of tries and a lot of time but eventually we got it. You guys are lucky because you get to watch that. My initial starting plan was to basically just spend the first four rounds in the starting room as you're not able to unlock one of your powers until round five. I would just hang out in here, I'd try and make some money, 
grab up an atoms and basically just play through the first couple rounds. I then make my way up to Pam Greer where I grab my tiger style kung fu mode and then I basically just start to open up the map. So you use kung fu mode to open up a bunch of stuff. You turn on the power. There's a couple power switches. So here's my second one. And then here I open up the last teleporter dorm. I then need to get 15 kills with the kung fu style in order to unlock the ninja shuriken. I make my way down to the other side of the subway, turn on the power, come over to tough enough, grab a coin, grab tough enough, and then proceed to make my way around the map looking for parts in order to open up pack a punch. So here I grab my fim reel and then here I grab my flyer and I am now able to go and open up the theater. Here I open it up, I repair pack a punch and then I need to do a part to get the alien fuses. This is the first step. I click this button and now I'm on a timer and I have to run all the way to this portal on the right open up this electrical box and then grab these fuses. So once I have these alien fuses, I now need to put them on the railroad tracks. Luckily for me, the train came just as I put them down, so I didn't have to wait very long. Once the train drives over them, I can now jump back down. They will be looking purple and I can grab them. Now I am ready for double pack a bunch. My next step is I'll use my tiger style and my new shuriken that I unlocked by getting 15 kills with it. I throw the shuriken at a rat cage and I now have to follow this very slow, very small rat around to a lot of different locations where I then have to throw a shuriken at other cages. And here's my last one. It ends up being in the bar at which point a yellow circle spawns and I now need to get kills inside the circle. Once I complete that, a bunch of ninjas will spawn. These ninjas are deadly. If you sprint, you die. They will teleport on top of you and you get hit. Example right there. At this point, I'm freaking out. Luckily, I had perk insured, so I kept my jug, but if I did not have jug here, I would be dead. These guys are so strong. I was not a big fan of the ninjas. They are way too powerful. I grab up and atoms. Now I can breathe again. I grab the Ripper Evo. And then I make my way into Pack a Punch. And I insert the alien fuses. Now I'm onto the step where I have to shoot four symbols around the map. They didn't change between the games, which is really nice. So this part was always pretty speedy. I then come down to the subway system and I grab bang bangs. I am now ready for my first Rat King fight. There's three of these fights. The first fight is really easy. They're all pretty easy. He's just a bullet sponge. If you don't kill him quick enough, you'll end up spawning the ninjas, which is terrifying. But at the end of the day, he really wasn't that bad to take down. So that's him doing his animation to spawn the ninjas. We take the ninjas out and then we're easily able to take the first Rat King out. The Rat King then drops an eye. Now we go talk to Pam and we get a new ability. We have to use our eye and we have to check around the map. There's 13 different locations that they can be and there can only be one symbol at a time. This part was extremely time consuming and I was not a fan of it, but you only had to shoot six. Once you shot one in one location, it couldn't be there again. It kind of made it a little bit easier. The next part that I had to do was the Morse code step. I had to listen to the phone and I had to listen to the, the beeps, whether they were a quick beep or a long beep. And then I had to decipher this in the Morse code, which would then give me a number. One of the posters around the map would have this number and then I needed to grab that specific post. I then place the poster on the spotlight and then I throw a grenade into this window and a ton of ninjas spawn. Here I just take my time and I clear out all the ninjas. I am on to the word step. The word step, I have to spell out a word so I got S so I decided to spell the word shield. I each letter has its own corresponding 
logo and this was quite a hard step to get used to but I just followed a diagram and a list of words and it was easy. Here we're ready to get into our second boss fight. I pack a punch and I'm ready for this one. He spawns some ninjas but I take him out pretty quick. Once I take him out he drops a brain then I return to Pam. I now have to wait two rounds or three rounds before something happens. It's a bit of a jump scare. In the meantime, I decide to pack a punch my candles. A few rounds later, we then get our little first jump scare. And the first time I did this, it actually terrified me. This time, not so much. We now spawn with a bunch of zombies around us. So we have to take out the zombies. And we're looking for a piece of a turnstile. So we grab the piece and then we bring it down and we place it onto the turnstile. I'm not exactly sure what relevance this part has, but we did it. Now this allows us to move on to our next step where we have to climb up to this area and we have to look inside of a window. We have to shoot another symbol inside the window where the blinds will drop. And then we have to get kills inside a bunch of yellow circles. Once we complete the yellow circles, I can now make my way over to the dance floor where I have to hit the turntables and then there will be a disco ball floating above a zombie on the dance floor. I now have to kill the disco ball zombie while there's another zombie on the dance floor so the disco ball can transfer to the other zombies. It's kind of interesting step. It was pretty difficult, but it wasn't that bad. I got it done. We then come and double pack a punch both of our weapons and we're pretty much ready for the boss fight. The last thing I needed to do was come and do the third and final little Rat King battle. This one wasn't too bad because I had double pack a bunch of weapons. I kind of just took him out pretty quickly. After this one, he drops a heart. Now we are fully ready to go into the boss battle. We just have to talk to Pam and then we are ready to head down. One thing to note, I failed this boss fight a lot and you can see the stress in my face. I was not a fan and I did not want to die. We enter the boss fight and we see the Rat King rise from the ground. Our first job that we need to do is kill the Rat King or deal enough damage to enter our first stage of three. So there's three stages. Um, there is one for the eye, one for the brain, and one for the heart. Between each stage you have to take the Rat King out. This is the first one so here I take him out and I grab the brain which is probably the easiest of the three stages. All you really have to do is run around the boss fight area while zombies with blue eyes go and attack the brain while the Rat King tries to defend it. Here once I finish it I now have to fight the Rat King. I turn on the vent because he will spawn ninjas and the vent will suck up the ninjas and I, I had died to the ninjas a lot in this boss battle so I just did not want to deal with them on this step. I go ahead and I take him out for the second time and I pick up the eye. We just use our ability to ping and then we just have to shoot these symbols around the map. This one, again, you basically just walk in a circle and you shoot the symbols and he continues to add more. And you just continue to shoot them until you get them all done. Here's me. I do one last ping here and I get a couple of the last ones and then I get a max ammo and I'm into fighting him again. So this time the trap was on cooldown and I was very worried. I thought he was gonna spawn a ton of ninjas. Luckily, I don't think he spawned any before I was able to take him down, so that's perfect. This last step, when you pick up the heart, is by far the hardest step. Green spewage will start coming in, and then you kind of have to kill the zombies while being in the green spew, with the zombie also in the green spew. The hard part is that the green spew also deals damage to you. Pretty much the entire time you're doing this part, you are taking damage, and I died doing this part a lot. I hit the vent so the ninjas can't get me, I pop twice the pain, and now I'm fully ready to just take this guy out. I just start laying into him because I know there's not much he can do. 
finally being able to put the Rat King down for good felt awesome. I was super excited about this one. This was the halfway point for the game. After this, I was super motivated to get the game done. At the end here, we say Pam. She he stabs him with the sword. And then our characters are able to grab the piece of the soul key. At which point, we are then teleported to a black and white area, which is the beginning of the attack of the radioactive thing. Overall, I thought Shaolin was an amazing map. Shaolin was very different from both Spaceland and Rave, and did an excellent job of immersing the player into an 80s kung fu New York crime film through its amazing visuals and story depth. Although this wasn't my favorite map, I can see where the developers were trying to go and appreciated the bold attempts to make the map feel unique. Now we're on to Attack. Attack of the Radioactive Thing takes place during the 1950s in California. It takes on a monochromatic aesthetic of its time period, the main protagonist of this map, other than ourselves, is Elvira, and Elvira has also been trapped into attack of, of the radioactive thing by Willard Weiler and assists us in taking him down. Again, our characters get a style overhaul for the 1950s theme, and in this case, I spawn in with Andre. Now, of all the maps, I think the Easter egg steps for this map were my least favorite. It felt like everything was very spread out, and this map was had a lot of unused space that just really didn't need to be there. So I just felt like there was a lot of running around and grabbing parts. So that's why this wasn't my, my favorite map for the Easter egg. So here I build the seismic wave generator, which I'm going to need for a part later on. And then I basically just accumulate points in these first couple rooms until I'm able to just buy through a good majority of the map and get a majority of the parts that I'm going to need. The first part that I grab here is down at the beach, and this is the power handle. I then also use my seismic wave generator to bring the arm up. I also run under the bridge and I grab a piece for the chemical stamp. And here you can see me add the power switch. And then once you add the power switch, you can add a component to that trap. So now that trap is functioning. And then we grab Elvira's book. We also come to the refrigerator and add a part there, so that trap is running, and then we finally come back and talk to Elvira. After speaking with Elvira, she gives me a vial, which I can then fill up by getting melee kills with a cleaver. As you can see there, I needed to melee a glowing green guy, and he drops a leg. And then here, I just complete my melee kills in order to fill up my vial. On my way back to Elvira, I throw a grenade into this tree, which will knock out another leg. I pick this leg up. I come back over and chat with Elvira, which at this point, she now is able to open up Pack-a-Punch, which we are going to need for some of the parts of this Easter egg. Here, I run through, I check my M value. And then I run over and I grab a arm from the RV place out of the fireplace. I grab the gauges for the chemistry step. I then also grab this machine for the chemistry step. One thing to note, I was not recording during the beginning of my Easter egg run. So this is all just from a different game where I went and recreated what I did. After I grabbed the machinery for the chemical step is where my real run begins right here. I then go grab a crowbar from the motel and break this mirror. And then I also break another mirror off this car. Here I run into the market and I turn on the frost trap, which will now allow me to run back in and melee one of the bodies with the crowbar. And now I can grab the torso. Uh, when Alvira is up, you're able to run back to her spot and grab a mirror. And now I head into Pack-a-Punch where I can click this button and I teleport really quickly and I spawn into the RV. I grab the alien fuses and the zombie head and I try to look at the fridge for the number but I just miss it. Here I need to put the alien fuses on this trap with a, another vial that I've filled up with the cleaver and then I can come back and grab them and the alien fuses are charged so I'm good for double pack-a-punch. I then prone in the market at the bottom of that desk and I see that the number I need is 6712. So I now have to walk around the map and change all of these pressurized pipe systems to 
one of them has to be six, one has to be seven, one has to be one, and one has to be two. So there we go, that unlocks the safe, and I can now grab the code. That is the code I will use to take out the beast at the end. Here I build the zombie, and I set up all the mirrors, and I put in my code. Unfortunately, I forgot one part, so I just had to quickly run into the ice cream shop and grab this code. I can place this little ticket into the machine and this is just a random number guessing step. This part is kind of crazy. Luckily for me on the first try I get three of the numbers which is awesome so then I come back and on my second try I actually get it. This was the fastest I was ever able to do this. So once you input the code correctly you then hit the machine again and the turret sitting there or laser beam will shoot the zombie and then the zombie will come back to life. So now the zombies all put back together. I now have to enter that code, but in reverse. Here I enter the code in reverse and then I hit the switch again and another laser beam will come out and the zombie that we had just created now turns into a key. I thought this step was pretty cool how you enter the code one way and the parts that you collected for the zombie put the zombie back together and then the beam brings him to life and then you enter the code in reverse and it kills the zombie and you get a key. It doesn't make a ton of sense but I did really enjoy this step. As you saw there I put a battery into a recording device which then allowed me to hear what chemical compound I'm going to need to use in order to take out the boss. I then head to Pack-a-Punch and I installed the alien fuses into the pack punch machine so I am now ready for double pack a punch. The next step I like to call the number step or the color step. At this point I figure out which numbers I don't need and I figure out which number I do need so then I can multiply this number against the M value that I found earlier in the game and this will give me a number that is less than equal to or greater than these various numbers that you'll see on the screen. So I found out that my color is green and I now have to go around the map and screenshot the boards in the green color. Here I used the key from the zombie that we made to unlock the garage and then I start assembling the chemistry equipment. So now I'm ready for the chemistry step which again I will not bore you with. This step took me so long. We got it done. Um, unfortunately, I missed picking up the pages and bringing them to Elvira, and then I also missed one of the bomb parts. After picking up the last bomb part and creating our chemical compound, I was now ready to jump into the boss fight. I just wanted to make sure that I pack a punch my guns, I wanted to double pack the candles and double pack the Osa in order to make this as easy as possible. Here I do get a little creative with my fate and fortune cards I use a refund policy for my first two pack a punches and then I use it for the third or the double pack a punch on the Kendall and then I use a coupon clipper for the double pack a punch on the Osa I definitely didn't need to use these for this part but at this point I was already a few hours into this run and I just wanted to get into the boss fight as soon as possible now that I'm ready, I head back over to the bomb, at which point it will teleport me into the boss fight. The first stage of the boss fight is to just guide the nuke all the way to the beach. So this part really isn't that bad. You basically just kill the zombies that come at you, and then if you get overwhelmed, just start training. There's no need to go quick on this part. You can really take your time. As you can see here, I just use my candles and I kind of try and take out the green guys with my candles and I, and I just train up the zombies and this in this part I was in no rush I just want to take my time make sure I get there safe make sure we don't take any downs once we escort the bomb all the way down to the water it will then shoot into the mouth of the radioactive thing and here we are on to our second step where I now need to jump on these cannons and shoot the radioactive thing in the chest three times so right there that's one I jump back on it right here we miss that's okay we hit our second shot and then we just have to hit him one more time so right here we hit him one last time and now 
we are pretty much on to the third step. Although I didn't love this map, I really enjoyed this boss fight. This boss fight was a ton of fun. I like the cannons. Um, I like this third stage coming up. And then you guys will see the last few steps, which I thought were really, really cool. The third step here is essentially just a survive step. The radioactive thing will spew green radioactive goo all over the front of the beach. And then he'll shoot the green guys and then I basically just take him out this part was really easy and he basically just pushes you further and further back up the beach and then once you're done the radioactive thing will send out these lasers and I thought this was probably one of the coolest steps in any zombie game where you have to run down the beach while avoiding the lasers and you have to get down the beach in 10 seconds and you have to hit the bomb and then once you hit the bomb, you enter the beast's stomach, and then you enter that code that we once found at the beginning of the match. Here, I enter the code. I only mess up once, which was awesome, and you can see it in my face. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's over. This map took me way too long. It was not a difficult map, but it took me a lot of tries, so um, I was very happy to finish it off. Attack of the radioactive thing was not my favorite map. I felt like there was just a lot of picking up parts and stuff. Some of the steps I thought were cool, and I especially loved the boss fight. But all in all, it felt like this map could have been executed a little bit better by changing up some of the steps and using the space just a little bit more. It just felt a little bit too big for what needed to be done. Our characters then grab the soul key and we are teleported onto a spaceship. This spaceship that we are on is now taking us to Nightfall, which is the extinction setting. Extinction from Call of Duty Ghosts. This is where we get a glimpse of our last and final map, The Beast from Beyond. The Beast from Beyond takes place in 2200, where Willer Wyler has rewritten the extinction plot to where he traps our characters. Although this map lacked a celebrity cameo, I found the gameplay far more engaging than Attack of the Radioactive Thing. When I first started playing Beast from Beyond, I was frustrated and upset that the early game was only cryptids. I also disliked that instead of balancing the cryptid to make a pistol viable, they had to spawn you with an OSA in order to be able to compete. Although this frustrated me, it soon began to grow on me. Cryptids at the beginning create stress and tension that early game on other maps does not have. It also provides the player with a final relief when you finally forget Neil's head and are able to turn on power. Like most maps, I hang out in the spawn room and try and collect points until I'm able to kind of open up where I need to go to turn on power, so that's what I did. I grabbed up an atoms, and then here you can see me throw a grenade at this box, and then it spawns a skull, which I can then shoot. And then here I also grab my first bridge part. I shoot a box and now I can grab the alien fuses so this will be for double pack a punch and then I also grab my second bridge part. Here I stand on a little red X and I have to stand here for a couple minutes and kill zombies and I can't leave this green circle. Once I do this a little skull will spawn and I have to jump off of something and grab it which then allows me to unlock the entangler. Once I unlock the entangler, I then go and I push a button which then activates this turret and the turret will then shoot a hole in the wall and create a portal. I then go and drop off the alien fuses at this beast and then I grab the final bridge part. Here I use the entangler to grab a disc in the vent and then I shoot that disc through the vent and then it will come out in one of many locations. So there I found it. And then here I build the bridge and I grab my second key card that I'm going to need. And then I enter pack a punch and I leave. And once I do this, a blue beast will spawn. And this guy also has a key card that you need to grab. So I kill him. I continue on to the next round because I got a double points. And then I grab the third key card. In order to unlock the fourth key card, I have to grab a space helmet with the entangler and then I have to shoot it at these monitors. And once I do that, I can now grab the final key card. And now once I have them all, I have to look at a sheet to see which order all of them need to go in. But there we go, put all four in. 
I then take the teleporter back to the theater and I grab the film reel. I then grab a button which I need to grab with the entangler which then allows me to shoot the button into a picture of the beast from beyond which then puts the button into the map. So here is a deciphering step which was pretty easy. I basically just have to turn all of the horizontal handles in order to make all of the handles go the same direction. And then the final step before the boss fight is to grab Neil's head and we have to bring it all the way over to pack a punch. It's very slow and Neil's always looking around. This door was a major problem for me. This door stopped me up so many times. This time I got lucky and he popped it right open. So here I head into pack a punch and I just have to put Neil in this computer. And that is the entire Easter egg setup done. I now just need to get points and pack a punch and then I am ready for the boss fight. I go and grab Jug, which you have to take this little jump down for, and if you mess up this jump, you die. I've learned that the hard way. And then after this, I take the teleporter back and I turn on this trap, which then allows me to pull a head out of the trap with the entangler, and then I can drop the head and pick it up. And then now I can go bring it over to the brute and put it on his head, and he will shoot the alien fuses which now will give me double pack a punch once I install them. Now, from what I had heard, the Beast from Beyond is the hardest boss fight in Infinite Warfare of the of the DLC maps. I popped the perk insured because I figured I'm going to need it and I grabbed the EBR, which apparently is really good for killing the rhinos and the final bosses. And then I kind of just roam around I get all my points, I grab all my perks, and then ready for the boss fight. I do end up grabbing the VPR as kind of my safety weapon. Here I install the alien fuses, and then I pack punch the VPR, again using the refund policy. So there we go, and then I come back and I double pack punch both of the weapons and then I'm good to go for the boss fight. So here I walk up to Neil and I press his head and I will immediately get teleported into the boss fight. The first part here is just to take out these rhinos and taking out the rhinos is, is pretty easy especially with this double pack punched EPR. As you can see I just put it into full auto mode. I, as soon as they open up, I just start shooting and they go down like nobody's business. This, this weapon is amazing for this boss fight and I, I don't think I would have been able to do it without it. Here they have a ammo crate in this map because you're going to need that much ammo doing this boss fight. This boss fight is extremely hard. Here I basically just sit in this corner and all of these cryptids are going to spawn through the teleporters. Once the that section's done, so I probably sat there for a couple minutes. Once that section is done, I then run, I get a bit more ammo, and then I do the same thing on the other side, but instead of sitting in one spot, because there's so many cryptid and so many phantom spawning, I just decide to train around. I just keep my feet moving and I try not to get hit. On this map, that is easier said than done. Right here, I round this corner and I make eye contact with a rhino. And I actually froze. I just shot at him and I didn't know what to do. And then I realized, no, that's not happening. I need to move. So I just, <laughs> I just continue to run the train. You basically just run the train until these, commu these computer monitors come up. And once these go up, I can now run around the map and I can disable all of these computers which will then disable the teleporters. So once I disable all of the consoles, the laser will then just begin shooting around and I kind of just have to survive for a little bit and a, it will shoot open a, a box where it gives me a timer. So right here, I'm just waiting for that box to get shot and I go down, I get double hit in the back by phantoms and luckily I had perk insured. So I've run 
I get away from the rhino and this was just a nightmare. I got so lucky that I didn't die here, but I looked and I saw that the timer was starting to count down. So I knew I just only had to survive for 99 seconds. Easier said than done when there's this many cryptid running at you. I tried to grab ammo here. There's a rhino in the middle. I just keep running. And the, the strategy with this is if I keep running around the outside here just like this, the rhinos will stay in the middle. They'll keep circling in the middle area so I don't have to deal with the rhinos. I just need to shoot what's in front of me and hope for the best. Right here I jump and I turn around and you can see there's so many cryptid behind me and then here I slow it down. I take a little look at the monitor and I see there's four seconds. And I run and I come up to the monitor and I turn it off and no, I take it down. I get swarmed and I have to respawn and here I'm out of perks. I have no perks so I run up. This is another thing, they put extra perks on the map because they know how hard this boss fight is. So I come up, I grab all my perks again and I'm ready to fight the big blue guys. So here I pop my ego trip fate and fortune card which deals extra damage um, to the head I'm able to take down the first one and again this EBR just makes absolute light work of these beasts here I put down the second one and then that is the boss fight complete you can see on my face I'm fired up. It took me so long to finally beat this game and this map took a lot of tries, especially in the boss fight, so I was very happy to finally be done. Upon completion, our characters are then teleported back to where we started the game and we now grab a hold of Willard Weiler and we decide that we're going to put him into Spaceland. So we're going to give him a taste of his own medicine. But little did we know, Willard Weiler sold his soul to Mephistopheles, the devil in this game, in order to trap people into his movies and create the best death scenes. In return, these people that died had their souls go to Mephistopheles. What this means is that once we put Willard Weiler into Zombies in Spaceland, means that our characters now become Willard Wyler and we now owe the devil souls. Overall I thought the Beast from Beyond was a really good map and I don't understand why it got so much hate. Sure the easter egg wasn't too complex and there wasn't a lot of steps to it but the boss fight was pretty fun, it had a good challenge and it was very rewarding to finish. I also thought that the Beast from Beyond continued the story well and the ending is really good. I think this part's going to be really exciting. I now just need to play through all of the maps in Director's Cut. And then I will be able to release a Mephistopheles video. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. And I will see you next time once I beat Mephistopheles. Thank you for watching. You have served thy master well. Your death was merely the beginning. <laughs>